Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? All right, children. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming today to the Home Health Educational Series talk. And this particular uh, topic today, as you know, is home health. We have the home health panel of uh, representatives here, and it is a question and answer. I would like to say I have, uh, oh, that's me. There we go. Um, we're all going to come up and, and do a little intro, let you know what we do, who we are. Come on in. And uh, go down the line, and then we can t uh, field questions and answers and maybe some scenarios for you, okay? So my name is Lori Zivan. I'm the Administrator, uh, Director of Home Health and Wellness, <clears throat> excuse me, and I've been here since April of this year. Some of you may know me, and I appreciate your support in me getting an understanding of this wonderful community and how this program operates. And I do have to say, I've been in senior communities, uh, prior in my work history, and I think this is a wonderful situation to have a home health company built into your livelihood here. Uh, it, it really is. So it's an honor and privilege to be here. Um, and again, I'm, I'm glad to be part of this community. So my work history has been in the nursing field with care delivery, various care deliveries, and management in the senior industry. So home health is comprised of a, a bright team of nurse case managers, staff nurses, wellness nurse, social services, program coordinator, administrative assistants, and the backbone of the team, who by the way, they're out on the floor, so are our CNAs who are certified nursing assistants. Those are the guys and gals that are out there delivering the day-to-day -day services for you to enrich your life here and to keep you safe and healthy. The Department of Home Health um, operates seven days a week, uh, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. respectively, with a nurse here eight hours on Saturday and Sunday. The nurses' aides do two shifts a day, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. So that is, that is every day. Um, the wellness clinic is open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 2.30, and it is closed on holidays. At, we are a licensed entity with Department of Health, both the wellness clinic and home health. So we do have Department of Health licensure and uh, policies that we must abide by. So sometimes when you hear, well, I don't know if we can do that, you know, that may be the reason why. <clears throat> Certified nurses aides can deliver a certain level of care in your apartment, um, but then we have the nurses on board as well. Um, I think I'll go ahead Oh, we do have, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, they're missing. Uh, the, summary car the summary and survey cards, are they out? Oh, good, thank you. All right, so, you know, wait till the end, of course, and then uh, we will collect those from you. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hand off to our wellness clinic nurse, Christy Knees. She's very good at what she does. She'll just give us a little something about herself, and then we'll, we'll go on down the line, and then we'll reconvene together as a panel to discuss your questions. Thank you. Yay, Christy. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Most of you know me. <laughs> there are a few new faces here. So, hello, I am Christy Knees. I am the LPN, the wellness nurse. Um, and like Lori said, I'm open Monday through Friday from 9 to 2.30. Um, so some of the services that we provide, for those of you that don't already know, 
um, if you come in, it's an outpatient nurse run uh, outpatient center. Oh, give me that here. It's an outpatient uh, nurse run outpatient center. Um, so if you need to come in, if you need first aid, if you need your vitals checked, um, we I do lab coordination. Um, I do TB skin testing if your doctor orders a tuberculin skin test for you. Um, if you need information, if you need any education on your disease process. Um, I also dispose of medications. Um, if you have any expired medications, you can bring them down, that's free of charge. Um, I think I mentioned the lab coordination. Um, if you need wound care, if you have any ordered, physician ordered services that you need, if you need a B12 injection or any kind of injection that your doctor orders and you want to have it done here, you can, as long as I have the order, I can do that for you in the wellness center. Um, I've been here for over four years and I really love this community um, and the wisdom that you all have to share with me when you come and we talk. Um, I think that's Oh, I've been a nurse for over 10 years. I have quite a variety of experience, um, and I'm really happy to be here. Thank you.17 years come February. I love this place. Can you tell? Um, when I'm not doing music appreciation, I am the program coordinator here in the home health department. I'm also the administrative assistant, so I help with all of the things in the office. Um, so some of the things, obviously, you can see. I have the flu clinic. We did our COVID clinic, booster clinic. We also do a shingles clinic. Uh, we'll be probably having one next year, 2022, for those who are wishing to have their shingles vaccine. I run the podiatry clinic. That's Dr. McGann that comes out. The hearing clinic, audiology, that is Dr. Beagle. She comes out. And uh, Dr. Beagle has been with us for eight years. So, and she loves our community. What does that tell you? If a doctor comes and leaves their practice to come here and see everybody here. So it's wonderful. Um, we also are going to be doing an information update event. And I think, I see Bobby Toyer going, yes. Um, and that is where we uh, get with everybody who has changes. Whether now we wait till the first of the year because you might be changing your insurance. Your children, and I'm going to give you a really good uh, example. Your children might be changing their cell phone number. Well, when you moved in, how many years ago it could be, you gave us a number for them, and that's the number we have. So we're dialing that number. That number is not reaching them. So the reason we have this information update is to refresh your files for us, emergency names, numbers, and what have you. A letter will be going out for that, so we can get everyone one-on-one, -on -one, you talk with each of us, and we update your information, okay? Um, what else is on there? Caring lenders. Okay, so caring lenders is a loan closet that we have here on site. It's not a store. It's what we have at the time. So if you're needing, say you come back from the hospital and you have maybe some surgery or what have you, uh, and you need a walker and it's gonna help you to get around for a while, call me. If I have one available and it works for you, you can borrow that, okay? If I don't have one, I can give you a referral of somebody out in the community. There's two companies that we, that we deal with and they can help you. All right, can, that's more like an information referral for that part. The, the last thing that I can think of off the top of my head is I do the wellness newsletter, and you get that in your mailbox the beginning of every month. It gives you a list of 
everything that's happening as far as home health goes. And there's usually the information in the back that's a little kind of nice thing, just a little thing to read. So I hope I um, covered everything that I do. My background really quick. I have no letters after my name, just M-O-M. -M. And, but I have worked with Hospice of the Valley over 10 years, five of them in bereavement. And before, and after that, I was with Scottsdale Senior Center. I worked in the social services area. So that's my background, and I'm a singer. That's it. <laughs> Later, please. Thank you, Jan. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sheila Lawrence, the social worker for IO. I've been here five plus months now. Still have not met everyone, but I always say, if you, I haven't met you, that could be a good thing. Because you haven't needed my services. I sort of fill in the blanks. I'm not clinical, I'm not the nursing, so if you have other needs, that's where I can come into play. Um, I, the gamut, <laughs> I've helped with you know, license renewals. A big thing I do help with, I know a lot of you, um, sometimes the computer part of re-registering for something or because everything comes electronically, I can come and help you do those kinds of things. Um, just as situations arise, just call my extension, and I, you know, if, if I need to refer you to someone else, I will. But I'm just here to, when little challenges arise, help you get through them without, you know, causing any undue stress. So, um, family members call us a lot too. So um, we work with the families as well. Many of you are kind and, and look out for your neighbor, and when we think maybe another level of care is needed, we start that process, talk to families, talk to the next level. We're always in contact with um, Madge up in AL, Elva in Wyrick if the need needs to be. When someone's in the hospital, I'm in touch with the social worker or case manager to find out what your care will be when you come back and to find the best plan and you know so your transition back is easy. But really, there's no question that I can't answer or help you with. Well, I should say can't answer. There's no question I won't listen to you ask. But um, just call my extension at 2072, and I will help you with whatever you need. Thank you. Stella, and uh, I'm sure you're familiar with my face. Um, I have been here uh, going 12, almost 12 and a half years now. Yeah. I am a registered nurse. Um, I started by climbing, you know, from the base up to where I am now. I started as a CNA, and I uh, worked at John C. Lincoln Hospital on for 88 years. And while I was there, I became a licensed practical nurse. And then I went ahead to get my bachelor's uh, and went over to um, Ono Health Shea. And while I was there, I got my master's. And of course, while in school, I came here. I went first to Satin Assisted Living. And the first time I came in here, I just felt, oh, I wished every human being will have the opportunity to be in a place like this. Because I've been in so many places, so many communities, and what I saw at the Assisted Living was so wonderful, and it was a beautiful place. I had very good experience. And I also helped out at Wyrick as a weekend nurse. And when the opportunity opened up for 
me to join home health, I decided it was time to leave uh, honor health. And I took that full-time position. But you know, life, many stories in life, different uh, things happen. And from full-time, I was sort of forced into part-time. So now I work, have been working Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And we have another nurse who covers uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. And that's Sherry. She's not here with us. Having said all that, um, it's a pleasure you know, being here and working with every one of you. Um, I see you all as you know, our parents. You know? And we try to do the best we can, even when we work with outside agencies. So, at any point you feel that it's time to get some help from home health, I am the one when you call or your family member notifies us that will come to your apartment to assess you and admit you into our program. Uh, we do have, like Laurie mentioned, we are state certified, so we try to comply with state rules and regulations. Uh, through the assessment, we are able to tell you what will be beneficial to you, and we go over the services that we provide. Um, we do quite a lot, and I know some of you are aware of what we the services we provide, but there has to be a reason for that, you know. It has, the services have to be provided while you are in your apartment. So I will be the one that will come in, do your history and physical contact, your doctor to get your current list of medications, your history and physical, and all of those informations. And, um, if you wanted us to manage your medications, that doesn't happen immediately because we have to have your most current list of medications from your doctor and all of uh, your history and physical. And uh, it depends on how fast your doctor responds to us before we can actually initiate your medication management. And uh, we have home health aides who help to remind you when to take your medication so they come to your apartment. And we have nurses who fill your medicine weekly and there is a fee for that. And usually these are things that I go over with you so you are aware upfront the cost of our services to you. There are a few services that are for free, you know, we don't charge you. Because uh, when you moved into Westminster Village, there were some contracts you signed about being a life care member and uh, the benefits that that brings to you. So basically, I am that nurse that will come in, you know, to ask you some questions, private questions, and then we move on from there. So there is a lot to talk about. Yeah. But when it's question and answer time, I will elaborate on whatever the questions are. All right, thank you. Thank you so I sort of work a dual role. I work as the floor nurse as well as the charge nurse in home health. As the floor nurse, I am the one that responds to emergencies and wellness calls. I help with in-apartment wound care and treatments. Uh, I help with medication management, speaking with families and doctors, and assisting with lab coordination. In my charge RN role, I assist with regulatory perspective pieces and then assist with any concerns that residents and staff members have. Uh, in terms of a little bit about myself, I am a newer nurse, uh, but I got my BSN RN from Arizona State University and I'm currently working on my master's in healthcare administration. Uh, I'm a new face to home health. I started working here at the end of August and I'm extremely blessed to be here and to get to know each and every one of you. 
Uh, in terms of my nursing background, I've worked in the hospital in a med surge floor, and I've also assisted management in skilled nursing facilities as well as memory care settings. And yeah, that's a little bit about myself, but essentially we are all very caring souls in home health, so should you guys need anything, we're always happy to lend a helping hand. Thank you. All right, we'll sit as a panel for you all now. Sheila and I are going to bring up a scenario that we'd like to discuss. That is, if you go to a hospital or to the ER, let's say they're saying it's time to go home, they're going to release you. It does depend on what hour of the day that Westminster Transport can help you back. And that really is pretty much a Monday through Friday. Sometimes there are drivers on the weekend, but it's not set in stone. Um, if it is an after hour and you're able, if you do not have family that can bring you back, reception can handle calling a lift. What they do request is that if you do go out to the hospital, let's face it, you're usually sick or it's a 911 episode, if you can take your cell phone, that's, that's the best, so we can just keep right in touch with you. Sometimes it's hard to reach the resident through an emergency room contact. You know, they're busy, and we're trying to find out what's going on. So if we can talk with you directly, that will really help, help you get home in a timely, safe fashion. So with that being said, if you can talk with reception or they can speak with you, we can help you get back home via lift. And, and I do believe there's a charge for that, yes. And if there is more of a medical need, it's, it's a case-to-case -case review. If someone would need oxygen per se, uh, we would set up a medical transport if it's after hours. Uh, we have several that we, well, a couple that we use that are reputable, and they will send a bill. So, um, any questions on transferring out of the hospital? Even if it's not the ER, just to get you home. If it's a regular weekday, or even the weekend, and it's a standard, you know, business hours, we will help coordinate with that hospital to get you back. Questions on that? I have a question. Yes. <laughs> of course. I, uh, okay. She's running. Thank you very much. The question that I have is, is there any concern on um, part of Westminster for having residents who are good friends with other residents take them to the hospital and bring them home? Is there any issue there at all? I don't believe so, because it is independent living. It is your you as the resident, it's your choice to make what best call is for you. We're here to support, but that's, that's great. If somebody even left with you and they're still staying with you, super. They can help you get back. Okay. Absolutely. Can I say something? Mm -hmm. the, what I would consider to be a concern, you know, with a resident assisting another resident to the hospital is, uh, it depends on what is going on. I would not recommend that a resident say, if, if, if a resident is having respiratory distress, you wouldn't want to take that person to your car, you know, to the hospital. Did you mean that? No, I really was more concerned about just, uh, does Westminster have any issues with a resident taking a resident to the hospital and picking them up? Which, frankly, we've done several times, and I, I thought to myself each time, I wonder if I'm supposed to be able to do this. Oh, you're right. We're independent living, so there shouldn't be any reason why not. Be like yeah. if you lived in a neighborhood, yeah, yeah. And your okay. neighbor took you. you okay. that yeah. makes sense. Um, yeah. As nurses, though, I understand mm -hmm. where Stella's coming from. Of course, you know, 911 if need be. Right. But right. if you're out together on the golf course, however you want to handle it. <laughs> <laughs> Sales questions? Questions in general. We know that uh, rather than give you specific scenarios, I think that 
you guys probably have the scenarios that you want answers to. My question is about lab work. We had, as I understood it before, a couple of days a week, or I don't know how often, a lab would come here and draw blood, or you could submit a UA urine for analysis. So is, do we have that kind of service still happening? Yes, um, I can still coordinate labs for you, um, but we're using a mobile, um, there's two different mobile units that we can call on at this point. Um, we are no longer at this moment uh, contracted with a lab like we were, where you were coming in on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, for your labs. Um, but if you have a need, you just come to see me, um, bring your order, or let me know which doctor, and I can call the doctor for the order. I'll get you set up uh, with the mobile unit. It's Unique Lab or CCL that we've been using right now um, until we find another one to contract with. Um, so yeah, we can, we can set it up Monday through Friday if that's what you need. To, yes. if, can I piggyback on that, please, before we go to the next question? So uh, Todd and I are working, I think our appointment with Sonora Quest is actually next week. Am I correct on that? Yes. So we are trying to put a better package together uh, with another lab that would come twice a week, which would be awesome. Otherwise, it's an as-needed basis with Christie's coordination till we have something further. My question is, uh, if you've been here a while, you're an independent living, and your health structure deteriorated a little bit. Does your policy to keep you an independent living as long as possible with support with home health? In other words, showers, medical uh, medicine, uh, what do you provide to, to keep a person in their apartment in the equivalent uh, of uh, assisted living? Good question. Well, I'll, I'll do my best with this. Um, first of all, to start with, you can use home health or call us if you've had, after surgery or even after a temporary illness or for long-term care assistance, you know, where we're, we've got you on our, our plan, we have a plan of care, as Stella has mentioned. We do, we do contract with you. We do sign on. We do get doctor's orders. I'll let Stella expound on that. But the nurses' aides, if you are life care, they can do two 15-minute tasks daily, whether it's helping you with breakfast, making sure you're dressed, that type of thing, tidying up in the kitchen. There, there's many items we can do. And when you are interested, that's when Stella and or Sherry come out and go over everything that we can offer. They are, these items are in your handbooks as well, but it can be a little daunting. Um, they can also, the nurses' aides can also help with showers, which we do offer at this time twice a week. Now that bumps it to a 30 minute visit. They can also help with linen change. We do not do personal laundry, but we can, we can assist with the, the linen changes. Um, what, if, what if you're not life care? Then, then if you're community plus, that is like a life care. If you are a community rental, renter, uh, there are fees associated with every task. And the nurses' aides, mainly, who would be doing these items that you're mentioning, sir, uh, are in 15-minute increments. And right now, that's $5.75. You know, that's, that's pretty good. Um, and like I mentioned, a shower, they block out 30 minutes. It just takes that time uh, to do it safely. If you need escorts, they can help escort you as well within the community. Um, so there are fees associated. We're, I'm not sure where that came from. This gentleman down here. Uh, this is the second question <laughs> associated with it. Just to, this is Todd Armstrong, the mm -hmm. email services, just to piggyback on that a little bit. Um, you know, Westminster Village is essentially, it's, it's designed to be a continuum of care. And so you come in independent living, 
Home health is there to add that extra supplement to make your life comfortable with some minor things, but as you continue to progress needing more care, that's where our staff and assisted living exists, and that's why we always strongly encourage people to get up there, have a lunch with Madge. If you haven't been up there, it's a beautiful area. The staff is great up there as well. Um, every resident that you ask that lives up there wishes they had moved in there sooner. You never hear someone say, oh, I wish I would have waited a little bit longer before I came up there. Um, and then you also have wire. That's that next level. But it is independent living, and we do have some residents that have the resources to hire in private help. So if someone's needing eight hours of a caregiver or maybe 24 hours, they do have the option to be able to do that yourself, but that would be something that you would need to uh, provide the resource for. And I just, I just want to add uh, this confusing aspect. Um, I want to make it clear that the services Home Health provides is sort of a drive-by. And what I mean by that, the Home Health aide comes in, does exactly what she is scheduled to do, and as soon as she's done doing that, she leaves. Now we use the term um, task for each of the services the aid provides. Um, we have the 15 minutes that uh, Laurie had alluded to, but it does not necessarily mean that the aid stays for 15 minutes exact to perform a task. For instance, if an aid is to assist you in taking out your trash, we know that it doesn't take 15 minutes to walk from your apartment to the trash room, you know, but it's considered 15 minutes. So, because in the past we've had issues where residents, you know, wanted a caregiver to stay exactly 15 minutes or 30 minutes in the apartment to complete whatever task, and then asking them to do extra. For every task that an aide performs, whether it's written or not, you are charged for that. But just know, you know, we cannot, the aide cannot stay for a lengthy period of time providing care. And when a resident gets to that point, when we assess that they need more help, that's when we encourage, like that. Uh, he said, we encourage the resident to start thinking of moving to a higher level of care or getting your own private care who will stay like four hours in a row to provide your care. I have another question. Uh, let's talk about what we've just been talking about, community care versus life care. Um, so if you are a life care, I'm understanding that the, it would be no charge for a 15-minute visit twice a day. Correct. If you are community care, there would be a charge. Let me give a scenario. A person fell down in their apartment, cut their arm, not, not enough for stitches, but scraped the skin off. It's bleeding. They need to be bound with gauze and wash it, clean it. Is that a charge for a life care member, or is that not? It's a, it's a nursing issue. Nurse right, a nurse would probably have to go. I don't know if your CNAs do that, but no. whatever. No, no. The nurse will have to go. Now, when the nurse gets there, if you are a life care uh, resident, they, it's considered an emergency, and the $100 fee is waived up. But if you were a, a community uh, resident, you are charged $100. That $100 takes care of the service, you know, the dressing, but you are also charged for the uh, supplies that the nurse used to take care of that wound. And that would be for, for community members? That would be for community members. Okay. Now, if the community member pays that extra monthly fee, which bumps you up to community plus, then you receive that service just like uh, a life care member would. In other words, you will not be charged the extra hundred dollars for emergency visit. Thank you. Jan, Evan, Rachel. My question is for Kathy. On the vital, vital statistics, 
Okay, Tom told me over a year ago that yes, we were getting new cards to fill out and there would be a place where you would list your friends and neighbors here on the campus yes. that you wanted notified if you were sent to the hospital. Yes. No such thing has ever happened. Um, when you meet with us in that um, information update, we do have a, there's an area that asks for contacts and we list in your contacts. And so your first contact usually is a family member, daughter, son, whatever, okay? But then there's a few after that that we can add on. And we can, and we have done that in the past, where I know somebody told me that they wanted their neighbor to know and have a key and to be let into their apartment to get whatever they need. And that was noted in that. So we can do that. And that would be in your that would be in your file. Okay, when we get these new forms, there yeah. is going to be plenty of space for that to be done. Yes, we're waiting for the new forms. I think it's what is that going on in your yard? Well, we'll have to enter it in. Yeah, we're gonna enter it in. Hello? I didn't, I'm still graining. There I am. am. Yes. We'll yes, Jan, we'll do our best. <laughs> Okay. Yes, yes. And then so yes, how soon will we be doing this? Okay. Remember what I you're said right. about we're going to wait. I am on? Well, wait until your mic. Green. Okay. Um, <laughs> we're going to wait till after the new year because a lot of people are going to be changing insurance open or open enrollment, that kind of stuff. So you'll probably be getting that letter come out maybe January and then we'll be setting up our appointments January, February, because it's going to take a lot of time because we do everybody in the whole place. So you'll make sure to get yours, okay? Thank you. Was that your, did I answer that? Okay. I'd just like to add something uh, mm -hmm. just to that. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Okay, excellent. Hi, Todd Arms from VP of Health Services. Um, one of the things, you know, that, that we realized, and I think we covered this in our Health Services Committee a couple months ago, is we had residents going out and residents here who were, you know, good friends of theirs but weren't able to get information um, about how they were doing. And one of the things that we recommended through the Health Services Committee um, was if you have your designated individual, so whether that's your power of attorney, but that specified person, and having them aware ahead of time to know that if something were to happen to you, to have something worked out with them so that they can they can reach your loved ones directly. Because if we have a list of 12 people on your medical record that can have information, we're not necessarily going to be going through that list and calling each of those individuals. So the best way would be is whoever your main contact is, make sure that you have that plan set up ahead of time so that way that individual can make sure that all those loved ones that you want to know where you're at and how you're doing can know how to do that. Rachel, on this sheet that we have to fill out, uh, it asks to rate below, but it doesn't say, it says to rate only one item. It doesn't say which item. Is this for home health? Are these questions for everybody? For every department? Yes, these questions are for the presentation as a whole. It's okay. But there, that, that question then would have to be divided between all of you. It, it is general, but I think there should be uh, an area to write specifics. If you turn it over, there's on the back. an area to write specifics. Yeah. You can sure. the comments. Sure. To build stuff out. And if you wanted to add a little note, like, no, Lori was not a five. Yeah. You know, put that there. <laughs> she was a two. <laughs> Yeah, just do your best, yes. What? That, that is difficult here. I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> we have another question. You mentioned that you're a community member. There's a monthly fee you can bring, you can pay to bring your service up to the equivalent of a live member. What is that monthly fee? He wants it's to go. Either he wants to know if he goes to Community Plus, what would that be? Todd, do you want to discuss that? Because I'm not sure. Uh, 
what the status of that is. I've heard 230 and I've seen 250. So it's about $250 a month. Is, do we have yeah. the number in the um, health services guide? Yeah, if you, yeah. Want to, if you want to pull that up from the community yeah, guide. Right um, and if any of you don't have a copy of the guide, you can let, um, Anna, can we still let you know at the front desk to get us a guide? And it's a great resource. It has a lot of the specific numbers. I can't remember that one specifically. Off the top. It is, it is 230. 230. Dollars a month. It's on page four. Yeah, and if there's, if there's a spouse, is that per person? It's or per person. Per person. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Somebody else had their hand up. Oh, right here. Oh, sorry. All right. Um, the first one is, um, in my mind, um, I have been told just by residents, and of course that's not the place to listen. So um, my question is, um, say I twisted my back really badly, and the next couple of weeks I know I can't change my bed. I don't have a doctor's notice for that for you. Am I able to get someone to help me with changing the bed? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Because I have been told that if you don't have a doctor's uh, recommendation, you can't get any help. So no. That, that is a long rumor, if any of you have heard that before. So I'd just like to clarify that. And my next question is, can I, do you mind if I just add some information? Do you mind if I add information to your first question? Yes. So when you call us that you can, you need help with bed making or changing your lane, if it's something that is not just one time, you know, the nurse, we contact your doctor to get an order to enable us. But if you haven't, if you haven't even told your doctor you twisted your no. back, oh, and for three weeks you need to help with your bed. That, and that's not an issue. All we need is we have a generic order that we fax to the doctor, and it simply says, okay for Westminster Village to provide services per resident's need. Right. So we just send that to the doctor, and he signs it, because we have to have that doctor order to provide you any okay. home health service. So what you're saying to me that is yes, yeah. I have to have a doctor's report. Yeah. The doctor's I, I, twist, I, I twist my back because I do exercise classes and things. I'm not going to call my doctor. You I'm just going to say I need to And the doctor will not prove unless he examines you first. Well, not necessarily. If, oh, yes. if, yes. if your doctor has, what I have encountered with doctors is if they have not seen you for a long time. Say you saw your doctor a year ago. When I send you that request order, they will report that they have not seen you for the past year. In that case, there's nothing we can do because technically, you know, they're supposed to see you. But otherwise, I have never had any problems with the doctor just signing, okay, for us to provide care for you. But even before we get the order from the doctor, we usually go ahead to start the, the services. Uh, Lori, Lori, could we clarify a little bit? I think the question is, even if a minor task provided by our home health team, would we require a doctor's order to be able to pick them up and help them on our case? It's my understanding, yes, to cover us from uh, allowing us to go into the apartment and, and render services. And if we have difficulty having a doctor, is that something we can help with? But we handle all that. We handle all of that from the office, as Stella was mentioning. We make the call, we fax the request, and I'll be honest with you, we'll go in and probably help the first time. We don't leave people in the lurch. So that I've, that I've seen, isn't that correct, Stella? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, but if you're anticipating three weeks, who knows, four weeks, we just want to cover ourselves due to our regulations. So I hope you understand that. And it, you know, I'm sure it can be difficult at times if a doctor can be naughty, but we'll go to the next doctor. 
you know. What was your second? Does that answer your question? It answers my question. Okay, you have part two. Part two. When uh, someone is ill, this is kind of just a general question. When I go to the doctor, the doctor can look on my records and they know everything about me. So if I were registered in uh, home health, which I expect I will be as I get older, um, my question is, do you have all of this on record, or are you contacting the doctor all the time? Do you want to tell her what we do? And I would, I would hate that. So that's why I'm asking. <laughs> no, well, if you, if you have already signed up with our services, we open up a chart, so we have all your information in the chart. Now, anytime you go to the doctor or you go to the hospital for whatever reasons, we always ask that you update us with whatever information. What did you just say? Okay. If for any reason, why you are under our care, you go to the hospital or you go to see your doctor or any specialist with a new diagnosis or whatever the inform new information is, we like to update your information that we already have. Well, of course, I would expect that. That's my question, really. So it would be our responsibility to request records. Yes. If, if you went to the hospital and did come home, or even if it's a specialist and you're on service with us, you can say, I'm back. Do you want copies of this? And then we can add it to your records. That way we have something current but otherwise we would request records from your physician when you do sign on i would expect that yes That's what my question is okay how, how are you are you keeping up with those who are actually using the um, home health system as needed are you keeping up so that you do have the records in case the person has passed out and they're supposed to have blood pressure medicine Yes. Things like that. This is my concern. And we do uh, print off a monthly. So nursing does supervisory visits and notes as well to keep everything current in your record. But we do print off a monthly report, so to speak. It looks more medical. These are the orders. These are what we're doing. Here's your medications. Here's some instructions on what you're to do with your knee or your back or this or that. We do fax it off to the physician and get it signed and put it back in your record. Okay, and on occasion you probably are dealing with people that have a bit of dementia. And in that instance, um, then are you keeping in touch with whoever is the first person on their list if they have dementia? Yes. Oh, sure. Oh, oh yes. yes. With the family. We're very involved with family. Mm -hmm. And, and we have to be careful, you know, we, we know our parameters. Okay. But if somebody is at risk, we're definitely uh, involved with family. And that's where this information um, yearly update will, will come handy. If you've had a son or daughter or even a loved anyone sign on as a new power of attorney, or you've changed your advanced directives, which we do have that coming up in a month too, to discuss advanced directives, those are the kind of things we'd love to have on record just to be there for you in case of emergency and just when you will need it. You know, it's just so we're apprised. All right, I have another question. As a resident, um, and you have good friends, and you are noticing that they are having dementia problems, but they certainly don't need to be in assisted living as yet because the neighbors are very aware and they're um, very much um, helping, I guess I'll put it that way. Uh, what is the responsibility of those of us as the neighbor in saying something to home health without getting that person with dementia into a pickle? You, uh, as a social worker, I get those calls a lot. There are, the neighbors do call and let me know, and I would appreciate that. Um, 
if you see a neighbor that is starting to struggle or having struggles, just call and, and let me know because we will keep our eyes on them. I mean, you know, we take it case by case. If it's severe or is progressing, we are in touch with family and things. All right, so it wouldn't be home health I would go to it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm in the home health office. We're all home health. Yeah, I'll be happy and say who do I talk to. Yeah. Any one of us. Call Sheila and just talk to me, but yes, I understand. So yes, in the home health office, it would get relayed to me. So as an ambassador, we come up with this a lot. And so I have never known quite which direction I'm supposed to go. So thank you very much for answering all my questions. I really You're appreciate welcome. It. And we have fielded yeah. these calls. Yeah. Yes. Since I was in here and tried to decide what level is handled by what skilled care teams, what do the CNAs do in the rooms? What do LPNs do if they're called in? What would require an RN to come to a independent living? And then I am unable to determine in my mind someone who's coming home from the hospital and cannot come here, they are sent to a different facility. What is that level of care that you're not accepting uh, for a while? And then how does that fit into the live care plan? Still, if you want to take the nursing part, and I'll take the yeah. placement one. Okay. So, with uh, when you sign up for home health services, we have what we call, um, you know, like personal care. There are different levels. There are there is a level where all you need is uh, non-hands-on. In other words, you just need help to empty your trash, take care of your bed and change linens, and uh, perhaps pick up meals or your mail, things like that that do not require uh, the aid touching you. So our home health aides will do that. Then we have a level where they do both hands-on and non-hands-on. In other words, what I mentioned the first time, plus they help you with your showers, and uh, they help you to put on your ten hose if you have that order, and yeah, basically that. They help you to dress up and all that. Yeah. So with that, the aides take care of all that. But the nurse will be the one to come in and assess you and sign you up, and then let the aides know your needs. Now, when it comes to medication management, the nurse takes care of, fills your medicine, they talk to your doctor, get the list of medications, contact pharmacy, and fill your medicine. Now, after the nurse fills the medicine, the aides are responsible to remind you, so they come to your apartment to tell you when to take your medications. And because we handle your meds from the beginning to the end, the aides, you know, hand off your meds to you. <coughs> So those, that's what they do. Now, for an RN, it just happens that the way we are set up here, we have the RNs as the case managers, and then we also have LPNs and RN, you know, as staff nurse. So the LPNs, for the most part, take care of the medication, they fill the medicine, and then they also respond to emergencies, just like the RNs do. Does that answer your question? All right, now, my question is, on wound care, isn't there a differentiation on what an LPN can do as opposed to an RN? No, not here. Not here. Mm -hmm. Okay, question, if someone's dismissed from the hospital and needs IV antibiotics, is that one that means that they cannot come back here? I don't see any IV medication being given. Exactly. That's when you are sent out to a different uh, facility depending on your insurance. You know, because uh, in the past, you know, you could come to Wyrith directly, but now, you know, we're contracted with some outside uh, facilities that you go there, and when you complete the course of the antibiotics or whatever IVs, and you come home, we pick up from there. If you still want, if you still need uh, care and you want our service to provide those care, yeah. Okay. Did you want? Uh, I can expound a little bit more. So 
I think if you come to some of uh, Todd's talks, the nursing center that is named as Warwick, they did deactivate their Medicare. So therefore, it, it's a case to case whether they can handle IVs or not. But I think that is really going away. So in the apartment for IL, for us, unless I do know how some of these hospitals and social workers discharge folks. If you have somebody that can help you or they feel that you can monitor your own IVs, they'll send you home with them. Otherwise, you would go to a skilled center where your insurance would cover you. Uh, let's say you're not quite ready to come home post these set IVs that you mentioned. You could go to Wyrick to have that higher level of care. Wyrick has the 24 seven caregivers, um, nurses, nurses aides. Uh, caregivers are, excuse me, in Sacton now. Uh, but seeing nurses aides and nurses around the clock, don't quote me on around the clock for the nurse. I'm not, I'm not sure where they're going. <laughs> but um, that's a higher level of care I'm now. sorry, real quick, just to jump in. So yeah, just to clarify, mm -hmm. um, with the healthcare center wiring, even even though right now we're still a skilled nursing facility, even with the license change, we still will have 24-hour nurses. There. Okay. Just want to make sure. That Thank that, you. That's well, see, but when we're speaking of nurses, isn't there a difference in what an LPN can provide as opposed to an RN? Yeah. Yes, there, yes. There, there is a difference. A lot of the LPNs are IV certified. You can be IV certified as a nurse. Yeah, right. Okay. And it does depend on some various lines. Yeah, they've got various IV lines that uh, maybe an LPN could not access. Right. Um, I have a question. I would like to know why there are so many long-time CNAs who have been here for many, many years who are now transferring up to assisted living. And I wonder what's happening, what's going to happen to independent living and what kind of care we're going to get. That's a good question. Um, I don't know if Todd, if Todd wants to get involved with this. Uh, there's a couple, you know, that are moving up to give personal care. And as you would expect, um, staff may move when a, when a manage, management moves as well. We've already brought on new people. Uh, folks have moved around in this campus, I think, a long time. But yes, we have some long-term folks that are moving moving on, and we're going to make it. We'll do our best, and we are looking uh, always on the lookout for good CNAs and nurses. I'll try to stop keeping on interrupting, but I, I appreciate it. So a couple things with that. I think it's a good point. I think um, you know one of the things our health services leadership team has been working really hard at. And I've seen at a better position um, than, I, than it's been since I've been here is really building the relationship amongst themselves. Uh, we they're, they're, we were siloed in certain ways where sometimes it was a little bit harder in sharing resources, um, and they've done a really good job, especially with the challenges we've been dealing with these last couple months with staffing. They've done a really good job of integrating with each other and you have CNAs and nurses jumping into multiple areas that we haven't seen before. And it, it's, it's beneficial for the teams because it allows us to have that staffing support, but it's also beneficial for the residents because often they work with that resident and another entity as well. And yes, you have Madge who moved up there, you have individuals who are used to working with her, so you'll see some of that, that's a natural, that's a natural process as well. Um, but also, you know, we encourage people to change things up a little bit themselves. I think Madge is a perfect example. She ran home health, and for her to be able to take on another leadership role and do something different that we knew she could be successful with as well, um, was moving up to Sacton. And so, yeah, so I, I think it is natural to see some of that, but I think it's all in a positive way. I just wanted to add something onto that, Sue, that you asked. Um, yeah, they have been with us a long, long time, um, you know, 20 years or whatever. But uh, two of them that I know of got a chance to go to school 
and get another degree on top of what they did. So they, I don't want to say better themselves, but yeah, they got not only they are CNA, but now they're a caregiver, which allows them to do another level of a job. And they had that opportunity to do it, so they grabbed it and they took it. So getting that degree allowed them to go to a different department too. So yeah, they just they just grew. Okay, they're still here. That's the most important thing. They're still here with us. So, Harvey. All right. Who sets the prices when a nurse comes to your your room? <laughs> no, no. The reason I say that. Yeah, no. We're putting on a band-aid and tried charging the eleven dollars. I took it off, I, I got a hold of God and he took it off. But I want to know how do they come up with these numbers? We well, my health is really not part of that <laughs> determination. Yeah. But luckily we have someone here that can probably answer that. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Right behind. <laughs> <laughs> right behind you. Um, yeah, I, you know, I think it's one of those things that when we're providing a service, you know, we're, we really do it in those blocks and moments. In certain instances, it can be really quick, and there's still, it, you know, we still do need to charge for that service. If you were to go out and go somewhere, you would not repair. You would pay. Yeah, if you were to go to your doctor's office to get a band-aid, I'm sure they would pay. Sure, they would charge you a lot more for it. Um, but obviously, if there is a scenario where you're not feeling comfortable about speak up, let us look at it and see if we can do it. I do believe they did a fair market value, and they do that regularly uh, on what, what an hourly nurse would be, what an hourly aide would be, and they try to break that down. And it's, it's probably still under what would be if, if you had someone come into your home from another service. I have a question, just quickly, and back to you, Sheila. Someone's getting discharged from the hospital, they have a, a social worker or discharged person. They need to talk to someone here to give them follow-up orders for care. Who do they, I'm in the hospital, who do I tell them to call? Uh, it can either come to me or to any of the nurses, depending, but um, all of us handle it. But, but my point is, so they call 451, 2000 and well, who do they who do they how do they get to the right person because frankly this happened to a friend of mine okay. from here who was there and they didn't know who to tell them to call is it okay if i answer that sure <clears throat> so if you're talking about a call from the hospital right. usually the doctors will not call home health to give the order we will always because this is what happens when a, a, a physician calls home help to give an order. We take it as a telephone order. And then we need the doctor's signature. And the way the hospital is set up, those doctors are not always there. So it becomes difficult to track down that doctor to sign that order. So usually what happens, the doctor writes a script and he can pass it to us. And then we take care of that. Or he can actually give it to you on discharge, and we'll take care of that when you come home. And if it has to do with medication, the doctors will usually call it in to your pharmacy. And if we manage your meds, then we'll they deliver it, and we'll take care of that. I think to um, add to that, they really, once they call reception, uh, what we try to do, let me back up a little bit, when we know someone's out, and mind you, we may not know someone's out, it's independent. So if we are aware there is a resident out, Sheila and I are already calling, introducing ourselves to the social service department and or discharge planner. That's in a perfect world. So I may have control issues. I don't know. I like being involved, but it really should just go to the staff nurse and they get everything to the case manager because we can't take the hospital records because they're, they're electronically signed. But they just need to get to the nursing department. That, that's all. Yeah. To here. Yes. Yeah. And then 2059. And it'll ring to everyone. As you know, it goes for yeah. everybody. 
we do all, we can take them and we get them to the right place. I understand there can be wires crossed well, at time, but like she said, in the perfect world, yeah. we try to make it as seamless as possible. We do like being involved, but you know, if it's Friday, we're going to be off. We're handing it off to those nurses that are on for the weekend, so they're expecting the call. Yeah. What is that? Anna. And, and if the hospital calls the front desk, then the front desk just asks who the patient is so that we know if we need to contact home health, assisted living, or wire it because we know where our residents live. So if they call the front desk, we send them to the right place. Okay. Right. Good. Yes. Thank you. All right, we're going to go ahead with one more question here. Thank you to the home health team for being here. I'd like to encourage if you continue to have questions or clarifications, you can always ask any of these ladies up there. You can always ask myself as well. You don't have to wait for the next Q&A, even though we will be having more of these. Um, so thank you, everyone, for attending. Go ahead, Mr. Waldo, have a question. Yes, I have a question. <clears throat> My question is, how many on the software side? Uh, we have had uh, a number of people when, during the pandemic uh, that have been isolated in their rooms and uh, they have not done well and they needed attention. Now, we have tried to do that with Heart to Heart and Neighborhood Ministries. But is there some way that they could call Home Health and uh, somebody would be available to go and talk with them? Or what would Home Health do? Absolutely. Oh. Oh. Absolutely. 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 <laughs> yes, I will. I get those calls and I do. I can't see your face. I'm sorry. It's Mr. I know who it was. He was right behind that. Um, yes, and um, uh, that's why I said if the resident themselves doesn't feel comfortable calling, you as their neighbor, let me know that and we do drop in. Or we're in contact with the whole team. If they're on service, the CNAs, you know, step up and or you know, get an assessment or uh, just watching them to see what they need. But we all work together. We're constantly in communication about the re uh, the residents were treated. But by all means, they can call social services, and I will go and see them. Don't forget oh. to go to the front desk and ask for your copy if you don't no, have call me. a guide. Call Anna, 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 Anna. Call Anna if you need a guide. But these are the new ones and you really do need to have a copy, whether you be in the community or life care. Maybe just in a little ending piece, as Home Health, we really do, we meet twice a week as full staff to discuss any issues that are going on with residents, whether they're if someone's coming to the forefront or we're getting these phone calls or concerns or isolation, we talk about it as a team regularly to ourselves and do our best to reach out in the most compliant way that we can. Um, and we're, we're, we're a team that wants to communicate. We have helped people move uh, up to Sacton or work towards a better uh, lifestyle for themselves. Uh, uh, for those folks that were unable to meet their needs in their apartment. But other than that, with home health, our goal is for you to age in place and do the best you can in your home environment. Thank you. Here's, here's my side. <laughs> Hi, sidekick. When you leave, please give your evaluations either to Jan Walker, who will be at this end, or maybe Mason, who will be at this end, and make sure you turn them in. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming, everybody.